Hi gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, we're talking about Smart Organize. This is a new feature in On One Photo Raw 2021. As its name suggests, it helps you get organized. If you have photos, a bunch of a similar subject, uh, brackets, taken at different locations or different times, Smart Organize can help you group and corral those photos and figure out which ones you really want to keep, which ones you really want to work with, and this helps you get organized. If you enjoy this video, you're thinking about Photo Raw or upgrading, would appreciate it if you use the link in the show notes to make a purchase. No extra cost to you and that helps support tutorials like this one. So let's have a look at the feature. So here in Browse, I'm looking at a set of photos in my cataloged area. I'm looking at this incoming folder, a group of photos from a variety of different shoots. Subfolders are all being viewed. You can look at any set of photos that you like. You can do a date-based range. You could do your albums. You could do a folder in your library. It doesn't really matter. It's any group of photos you want to get organized. I'll stick with this incoming area and choose Smart Organize on the left-hand side. We have a few options. We can decide current photos, or as I mentioned, you can do your entire catalog folder set, a particular folder that you're you know, wanting to work with, individual folders in your catalog. I'll stick with the current view. And then your search mode. What are you looking for? Maybe you've got duplicates you're trying to identify to clean up you know, your, your hard drive, similar appearance, time, place. For this set, I will choose similar appearance. I'll click find and Smart Organize goes out, looks across all of the photos in the group you're examining. We'll dismiss that welcome window and it creates these groups in this case, based on my search option of find similar appearance. Now, the groupings are created by the you know, really some AI underneath the covers here. It's looking at the contents of the photo. I'm looking for similar appearance. It's creating these groups. Now, as you scan through the groups, you'll notice a couple of things. You don't see every single photo that I had in uh, my collection of uh, photos in my incoming area. They all didn't come up here because of either they were distinctly different enough from all of the other photos that they did not match the similar appearance criteria, or I need to fine tune how the matching is working. So you have some options here about fine tuning what similar appearance is. And the same holds true for the other choices as well. So if you don't see exactly the groupings you are looking for, pop into the area underneath the find options. And in this case, if I push like matching level really far to the right, that means really, really be precise about what's considered the same. And most of the photos disappeared because those sunset photos, there's going to be slight movements around with the clouds and the, the, the sunbeams will be different. So I'm being very, very particular about what a match is. You know, conversely, if I lower that down to zero and I search, my groups got bigger, like this group is now six photos. Earlier it was four when it was in the middle. We'll do that again, and we can see that separation. The defaults are pretty good, and this is an example where I can show you why it's pretty good. Look at this first group here. These four certainly similar sunsets. I changed my composition a little bit. There's a gap here on the, the left-hand side. The sun is a little bit farther in to the frame. That's being noticed, and those groups are being set differently. Orientation is considered, you know, and so on down the line. So the similarities are pretty well detected. You know, here the sun is still above the horizon. Here it's below. Those groupings are made automatically. Now, once you have these groups, you really are thinking in one of two ways. This is a mindset thing. Either you're thinking in terms of what am I going to reject? What do I not want to look at anymore? In which case, you start working with the tool and deciding which set of photos are not necessary. And let's say looking at these first four, I like that the sun is opening up more here. Maybe this one, but earlier in the shoot, I'll check these two. I don't want those around. I can reject all of these. I can reject just my marked ones. Or if I'm not really sure, I can skip the group entirely. But this is the mindset of rejecting what I don't want to look at. So let's say for the sake of argument, I'll uh, reject those marked ones. They will disappear from this group. 
and then underneath in browse they've been marked with a reject flag that's controlled by the reject mode I can either reject it or I can flat out delete the file I tend to choose reject and later on once I'm certain I don't need that photo anymore I can delete it out of browse with you know one of the advanced searches just looking for rejected photos now for something like these two where it may be very difficult to see the difference we have a different view mode I can open this up with a side-by-side -side view I have a much larger thumbnail and I can see that this photo here with a nicer sunburst I want that and I'll select this other one instead and you can zoom in and take a look at what's going on in these thumbnails here now they are thumbnails you can also lock the zoom and pan so you can check out both sides see which ones you like there's a little more accent of light on the on the right hand side than on the left hand side that's all telling me this is the one I like this is the one I'm gonna get rid of again I'm in that mode of what do I want to reject let me just select that one great reject my marked ones and I'll move on to the next group we move back out to my grid view here and you can do this so on down the line now the other mindset the other approach you can take with your smart organize is taking sets of photos that you want to keep and moving them into a subfolder and so let's uh, use this example here let's say this one's with the benches uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna work with probably both of them and figure out what's going on let me select both and then I'll move them into a new subfolder I'll just call it benches and that will move those into a subfolder that I know I'm going to go work with later on once you're all done with your smart organize you can click done and now back out in browse we'll have a few things here here are the shoots that I made this is the one that had the benches so now I have those two bench photos in my benches area but also notice that I have some rejected photos right so now those ones are the ones I marked as rejected and smart organized I can go clean those up delete them move them out of my way and I've culled down what I'm interested in looking at uh, you know to really kind of finish off the workflow I'd probably go into the advanced search and turn that on and just say you know show me ones that are liked or unmarked and so now I've hidden my rejected photos and I can see just the things that I really want to work with so that's just one way of using smart organize there are a variety of other workflows there's a one other mode that is this auto mark that lets you automatically select photos based on criteria that you set and that's for that uh, I call it positive mindset of these are the ones I want to keep I want to group them into a subfolder let me show you that really really quickly too let me turn off that advanced search and go back into smart organize one more time we'll choose the same similar appearance matching criteria close that and in the upper right we have auto mark and a small gear let me click the gear first that pops open the preferences now what this is defining is your priorities on what gets automatically selected like you may want to have raw versus anything else edited or not edited and so on down the line of course you can move these up and down like for me let's say I want to move rating is probably more important to me than image dimensions and I don't use likes very often but I tend to use ratings more I'll move those up a little bit more and so all of these different criteria will get considered by smart organize and what's important about this is it means smart organize can be used just about anywhere in your workflow and also just to clean up your current catalog so if you've done ratings and you've done edits and all those things you can still use smart organize and this particular auto mark feature to help you get organized now when I click auto mark all of those different rules are going to get considered and the first time you run it you get the option to bring the rules up we just saw that I'll hit apply and we'll notice that a variety of things got selected automatically for me 
when you're working with the auto mark option, this is really thinking in terms of, I want to keep this as a photo to keep. I would move it into a new subfolder. And let's say for this one here, I've got, you know, uh, a lovely sunset. I'll just call that a temporary folder. I work with subfolders really as transitory things, just as like buckets to move photos into that I'm going to work and regroup later. Uh, but that's just my workflow. Yours may be different. But the point is, Auto Mark will help find the photos that are most important to you based on the rules that you set in the preferences. So it can be very helpful. You can turn on or off different things. If you don't care about when it was modified, turn it off. If you don't care about the location, turn it off. You've got a lot of control over what AutoMark does. So that is Smart Organize. It's a way to gather and sift through a set of photos with a variety of criteria. It's powerful. It fits in with your workflow in a variety of spots. You can use it to retroactively organize your catalog. You can use it up front during initial culling. It's very useful for grouping HDR brackets or pano panels, you know, sweeps of a pano, grouping those together, putting them in a subfolder. And then you can tap into other features in Photo Raw 2021, like batching HDR merges or batching pano merges. So there's some there's some goodness that can come downstream from Smart Organize as well. And I do hope to see the feature grow. Uh, I would like to see more things added, like when I've done auto mark and I've selected things, you know, let me add a star rating to that or, or mark those as liked as opposed to just marking them uh, for rejection. So that's the story on Smart Organize. You got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.